So in this video, I want to take a look at installing Turbo C++ version 3 uh, for DOS onto the uh, Compaq Prolina 4-66 machine. Uh, this is the same machine that in a previous video we imaged, uh, got the setup partition on it, the setup diagnostic partition, so we can actually get into setup on the machine. So let's take a look in the box and see what it'll we'll get. So it looks like there's five three and a half inch floppies. They're 720K, they don't have the extra hole. They're all right protected as they should be. Oops. There's a set of five and a quarter inch discs. These may be high density since there's only three of them. Yeah, the discs are labeled high density. So that's interesting. Looks to me like this is a complete package here. Uh, I can get the discs back in the plastic. Well, I will do that later. Lots of fun stuff in here. So there's a uh, file index card for what's been purchased here. Three good reasons, I assume, to register. Yep. Easiest and fastest way to learn software today. A brochure for Borderland video series for various packages. I probably won't be watching those. Business reply card, it's actually an envelope. I assume then that there's a registration card hiding in here someplace. It's a professional choice, etc., etc. Interesting stuff. The world of C++ is easy to learn C++ when you go through it the right channel. I guess I need to put my glasses on. When you go through the right channels. Huh. I don't know what this is about. Looks like lessons and that kind of stuff. CompuServe. Oh, I remember CompuServe. Here is a sign up for CompuServe. I used CompuServe and a couple other of those systems since systems to license. Uh, new classic customer support, low density order coupon, and a C++. Uh, great looking user interfaces, TurboVision, Windows program, and a C++ reference card. So there's a lot of stuff here. I have previously looked at the user guide. So, we haven't actually looked at the back of the box. I guess we can here. Lots of cool stuff on the back of the box. Uh, easy programming in C and C++. I found it interesting on the front of the box. It's, you know, Turbo C++ version 3.0 includes Turbo C. I don't know if they're different things or not. Uh, in my mind, C++ encompasses all of C and then adds the object oriented on top of it, but maybe not, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's 90E, the language of the 90s. I attended Bruce Eccles' course, I think it was, back in the 90s on C++. Way back in the day, I think, took the course in Denver. So this is from back in the time when systems actually came with a real manual. You know, we've actually got a full-blown book here. It's not a PDF. Uh, and I really prefer documentation this way. I guess I'm just very old school. I get that in the modern world, APIs and things change on the fly. Uh, the world is what it is, but I, I appreciate a nice thick book like this. So uh, with that said, let's uh, get this stuff set back down here, get the floppy set aside, get the keyboard back on top of the machine so it's in shot. Uh, we'll go ahead and power the machine up. So. Video capture here should capture the machine coming up. We've got 20 megs of memory in the machine. It's a 486DX266. A uh, 2 gigabyte hard drive broke up into four partitions of 512 megs each. At the moment, a 3.5 inch high density floppy drive. I don't have a CD ROM in the system yet, and the 5 and a quarter inch hard or floppy drive that was in here previously has been removed. So this should do a little flash that cursor up there, the upper right hand corner of the screen. That's the indication that the uh, setup, excuse me, utility partition was created or diagnostic partition was created. So you can actually get into setup on this machine. And there we are. We have uh, 
got the machine booted. Uh, I can't type here with the keyboard sitting off like this. I think it's set up on A is what I'm supposed to run. It might be install. A colon install. Welcome to the Turbo C++ 3.0 installation. The program will install on your system. You'll need about 10.5 megabytes of disk. Enter to continue. Source drive is A. It sure is. Directories, I actually think, yeah, C colon TC is fine. Uh, options, IDE. I assume those are enabled because they show up in the list. Start installation. This certainly looks like the world of Borland to me, that you know, the way the, the windows look here, the way things work. Uh, I don't know if I've ever used Turbo C. I, you know, I did stuff with Turbo Pascal back in the day. I want to say most of my C programming on DOS machines was Wattcom, I think. I did a bunch of Mark Williams stuff at 1.2, but I think that was all in the Atari SD. So anyhow, we'll just let this thing keep running here. What's well, interesting, it copy like unzip.exe to onto the C drive TC folder, and then it's running it from there to unzip stuff back to that you know same path. It, it's you know it makes perfect sense what it's doing. Uh, I, I started to say earlier I have copied all five of the floppies already to make sure that they were fully readable. I didn't want to get you know halfway into this install and have a bad disk and all and these discs all read just fine so uh, which is kind of surprising well it's not surprising uh, this copy of turbo c plus plus was found surplus uh, back when i used to go out to a local recycler and could get into the the back area this and a couple other packages in box were there. I don't think I paid very much for them. I know I didn't pay very much for them. Just grabbed it because it was kind of like, you know, who would, who would want that? Well, obviously, any of us who like old machines would want that. So uh, I've actually got some software that I think I'm going to try to convert to Turbo C. Uh, that's currently written for Wattcom. It'd be interesting to see if I can get that stuff, you know, the libraries build in Turbo C so they could be used. We'll see. This machine has a physical hard drive in it. You may be able to hear it. And you may not. Uh, it's a two gigabyte physical hard drive. Uh, you know, I'm not running off a compact flash or anything like that. Uh, the machine as well came from the same place, surplus. Uh, when I dug this machine out of storage, it had a five and a quarter inch high density floppy drive in it, and I looked through the hard drive, in, you know, data that I had on it, and realized I used this machine to image floppies for my TR-80 Model Four. Uh, so at some point, I picked this thing up, got enough of DOS on it to be able to image floppies and image, like I say, Model Four floppies, uh, which would have been pre-COVID, uh, pre the lockdowns. So I have no real memory of this beyond seeing the files on here and knowing I did the work at some point. So, you know, it seems like a, a capable little machine. Uh, other stuff to yap about here. Um, you know, it, it's got dual serial parallel port, just like you'd expect on it. PS2 mouse and keyboard ports. Regular IDE controller, regular floppy controller inside. Uh, you know, it's an okay little machine. Uh, I did some playing on it earlier to see if I could replace the processor. Uh, I, I've got a overdrive processor here. I'm not seeing it at the moment. Tried to replace the 486DX66 with an overdrive processor. Is it still sitting back here? It's actually sitting back here. And the system would start and run, 
but it couldn't it couldn't boot DOS. DOS would fail to boot, and I never did figure out what that was. Uh, but this is an Intel Pentium overdrive that's meant to drop into a 40, basically a 46 socket. Oh, there's a bent pin on it. Well, it was in the socket successfully, so that's happened since I removed it from the socket. Crud. I will have to come back and fix that. And like I said, I, I mucked around with it and then gave up uh, and put the 486 DX266 back in. I, you know, I did things like change clock speeds and stuff like that, trying to get it to solidly boot and just kept getting an error cannot load operating system. And I don't know why, you know, things might have needed to be repartitioned or see, I can't leave it alone. I have to straighten that pin out. I feel bending happening, but I don't see bending happening. Glasses, take a look. Oh, it's gotten worse. I was bending the wrong pin. <laughs> oh, it's never easy. I can't believe all the work I've put into keeping these pins nice and square and straight. And yeah, I'm off camera, putzing around with straightening this pin out. at a later time. It's now installed in your system. All the necessary files have been installed onto your hard drive. If you selected yes to the installing command line version of the compiler, a configuration file has been created for you. Make sure the lines files equals 20 in your config sys and tc.bin is in your path for example okay getting help yeah that's not going to work anymore those systems are long gone so it looks like uh it's been installed uh Let's go ahead and restart. That way the auto exec and config.sys will get reloaded. And we should then pick up Turbo C in the path statement. Come on, little machine. You can do it. I was sitting here thinking I wouldn't need to restart. This isn't like a Windows 10 machine where you install something, you gotta restart nine times. No, I guess, yeah, yeah, I needed to restart. Uh, I could have manually, I guess, updated the path statement. Conf oh, man. Config.sys. There's a reason I have DOS key loaded. So files equals 30 is in there. Type auto exec dot bat, and I'm sure the path... No, the path has not been updated in here. Why is that? Is it TC bin that they wanted in the path? Huh. That's interesting that the path didn't get updated. C, Turbo C, uh, bin would be the place that would make the most sense to me. Actually, 
think we'll do an int main. I'm not gonna try to consume any parameters. I should have a mouse on here and I don't. Uh, alt file, edit, search, run, compile. I have a warning. Oh, it sure should return a value because I told it it would. Uh, let's... How do I get back to... If I had a mouse, I'd just click over there. Uh... Okay, just hitting enter did. Let's return a zero. I'll run. Well, if it ran, <laughs> it flashed by so quick. We couldn't see it. Uh, I wonder where it did the work at. No name, zero, zero. Quit. No name, zero, zero. Where do I want to save it? Ah, the root is good enough at this point. Ah, there's the hello world, so it did run. So, uh, hey, it's here at the root. No name, zero, zero. There it is. Our first little Turbo C program has been written and runs. So, I think that's going to wrap this one up. We installed it. We did a little something with it. Uh, not sure what else really to add here. Uh, if you enjoyed this of course give me a, a like if you're not subscribed I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe if you think this kind of content is valuable uh, any feedback anything uh, in the comments uh, I try to respond to everything in the comments uh, anyhow uh, I will see you in a future video